tornado. The word itself grabs your attention. It's one of the most powerful forces of nature. The strongest can have a wind speed in excess of 200 miles per hour. It could be more than a mile wide. Those are rare. Most are weaker and only about as wide as a football field and on the ground for a few hundred yards. Meteorologist Amber Twardy explains these destructive vortices. Well, when we're talking about the formation of severe weather, and in this case, the formation of even tornadoes, the first four ingredients that we need to look at are moisture, lift, instability, and wind shear. Wind shear is when we see winds at the Earth's surface that are weaker and maybe in a different direction than the winds that we see higher up in the atmosphere. When this starts to happen, we might see a rotating column of air form. This would be horizontal to the Earth's surface as this starts to spin around. Now, once we get a thunderstorm really coming into the area, you can see that warm air start to rise up in the atmosphere with something we call thunderstorm updrafts. Maybe those updrafts start to take part of that rotating column of air, lifting those up and eventually rotating this column of air to become vertical instead. Now, what we get from this is we start to see the development of cumulonimbus clouds, those big dark clouds that you see during thunderstorms. And even from that, we might start to look out for a rotating wall cloud. These have a lower base in them, a rotating big cloud in the sky. And from these is when we would start to see the formation of tornadoes. Now we start to see maybe some building that happens back towards the Earth's surface. A lot of that starting to stretch towards the ground. If it doesn't quite touch the ground, we call that a funnel cloud. Now, if it does touch the ground, that's when we classify it as a tornado. When we're talking about how we rate the strength of tornadoes, we use the enhanced Fujita scale or the EF scale. On the lower end of things, we have the EF0 tornado with winds between 65 to 85 miles an hour. At this point, we start to see some branches that are ripped off of trees and some shingles that are ripped off of homes, roofs too. Now, as far as the EF1 tornado goes, this is when we start to see winds between 86 to 110 miles an hour. Some more significant roof damage here, but also the potential for some of those windows to get broken and even some exterior doors that could be completely torn off their hinges. Bumping this up one to an EF2 tornado with winds between 111 to 135 miles an hour. Maybe a whole roof is taken off of a home. Maybe we start to see those broken windows, those shattered windows, the door completely gone, and maybe even a couple of cars that start to get tossed around. With the EF3 tornado, this is when we start to look at more significant tornadoes, the larger ones that do the most damage here. Some of those homes that have a lot of exterior damage to those walls, some of these cars that could even be flipped over, and trees that could be snapped in half completely, even the smaller ones being uprooted. An EF4 tornado here with wind speeds that are between 166 to 200 miles an hour, these homes start to be leveled, and we start to see these cars that are thrown even further away. Once again, those trees just getting ripped out of the ground, but probably larger trees at this point before we see the EF5 tornado. This is when we have tornadoes that have wind speeds over 200 miles an hour, homes that are completely ripped off of their foundations and swept away, grass that gets pulled up from the ground, and also cars that get flown completely far away, as well as bigger trucks that could also be seeing some lift in the air. Now, no matter the rating of the tornado, all of them are very dangerous and they should all be taken very seriously because even if it has a smaller rating, it is still very dangerous to you. The Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma is a specialized branch of the National Weather Service and is a key partner in helping us give you the first warning for severe weather. We spoke with Matthew Elliott, the warning coordination meteorologist about their role in severe weather forecasting. In addition to doing the forecasts uh, for severe weather, we also issue what's called severe thunderstorm or tornado watches. And though basically means that the atmosphere is favorable for severe thunderstorms in your area. They are a precursor for a warning, which means that the severe weather is actually occurring at the moment. So the, the watch means that you should just start preparing for the potential of severe weather across your area. So those are the two main products that we issue here, the, the forecast and the, uh, of what's gonna happen over the next eight days and also the, the severe thunderstorm and tornado watches. We're really, uh, to begin with, looking for the potential for thunderstorms. So to, to even have a severe thunderstorm, you first have to have just a general thunderstorm develop. And so for that, we're looking for the combination of you know, heat, and moisture, uh, which creates some instability in the atmosphere, some rising motion. And you combine that with uh, what we call wind shear, which is a, you know, either a change in direction with the wind as you increase in height in the atmosphere, 
or a change in speed um, as you increase um, and heighten the atmosphere. And so you kind of combine those two things together and, and that allows for thunderstorms uh, to, to develop and uh, you increase the organization of the thunderstorms as those parameters increase. And then the potential for severe weather um, also increases as well. So we're really looking for here organized severe thunderstorms where you have you know, the, the potential for, for you know, a, a swaths of, of damaging wind, 58 miles per hour or greater. A one inch uh, hail diameter are greater um, or the potential for tornadoes. So those are the three main hazards we're looking for uh, the potential of uh, for severe weather. So as a warning coordination meteorologist at the Storm Prediction Center, my job is really to help translate um, both the new information and technology but also just the forecast information as well. So you know, we, I do both real-time forecast a translation you know, into the public, but also as we introduce new tools and, and new data sets and you know, the climate aspect, things like that as well. You know, coming down the pipeline for us over the next you know, five years to 10 years is the addition of timing information into official NOAA National Weather Service forecasts that, you know, for severe weather that cover the whole entire country. And so you're able to have consistent timing information about when the storms are, will impact you uh, that it's probabilistic as well. So you could use a, a you know a, a threshold that based off your decisions that would be useful for your operations. And so you, you can start to develop things like what's the earliest reasonable time of severe weather for your area and what's the most likely time that it will impact your area. How long might you be under a severe weather risk? These are all things that help the decision makers and the planners to really kind of add value to the decisions that they're making and to make sure that you and your family and, and the resources are available at the right time for you. And that's really important, something that we're very excited that that's coming down the, you know, the next five to 10 years. If a tornado happened right now while you're at home, what would you do? Where would you go? It's okay to be scared during storms, but if you're prepared, you can be in control of the situation. The most important thing you can do to prepare for severe weather is to talk to your family. Have a plan and practice it so everyone knows where to go when severe weather strikes. The key is to find the safe spot in your home, but all our homes are different. The goal during a tornado is to find your safe spot. Your safe spot will put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. A basement, if you have one, is the best place to be. You can pamper your safe spot. Have a blanket, have your bike helmet, keep it on your head, and even store with flashlight and snacks when it's time to take cover. If you don't have a basement, an interior room of your house, such as a bathroom like this, works best in trying to survive a tornado, especially if your bathroom has a tub because you can get into that reinforced area and with the help of some pillows and blankets, lie down in the tub with the blankets and pillows on top of you and put as many things in between you and the potential tornado as possible. If you need additional space, a closet in an interior room like this one will also work. Just make sure you don't have any big objects in the closet that could hurt you in case they fall down during the storm. If you live in an apartment, not a house, you still want to get away from any glass windows or doors like this, and you should still head into an interior room like a closet or bathroom. If you live in the top floor of an apartment, you're gonna wanna go downstairs. Go down the stairs to the bottom floor of your apartment complex and when you get there, see if you can go inside one of your downstairs neighbor's apartments or you can come under here, the staircase, and this is your apartment safe spot. On a nice day like today, we all want to be outside, head to the park and especially the playground. In the spring and summer months though, severe weather can happen at almost any time. Number one, you should know the forecast, but number two, if severe weather were to happen, do you have a plan to get from the outside to someplace safe inside? If you're on the playground and a thunderstorm happens, you want to move to safety. You want to get from the outdoors indoors. Like a public restroom, find a sturdy building, get inside, away from windows, and stay there until the threat passes. 